What is up, everybody? In today's video, you are going to learn how to learn hard stuff like machine learning, artificial intelligence, computer science, mathematics, whatever it is. I'm going to teach you how to learn more efficiently and more effectively. If you don't know me, I'm Phil Tabor, a physicist, former semiconductor engineer at Intel, turned machine learning practitioner, and I'm going to teach you how we learn hard stuff in industry and at the highest levels of academia. Let's get started. So let's think a little bit about how we actually think about learning in general. If you're like most people, your idea of learning is formed by the public school system, at least here in the United States. I can't speak to you know learning in other parts of the world because I didn't go to school in other parts of the world. But here in the States anyway, our conception of learning is quite broken. So what happens is you are stuffed into a room with dozens of other children in front of one teacher who lectures to the entire classroom as if it's only one student. They give the same material the same way to everybody at the same time. And this is all done with the goal of teaching students to pass an exam, right? The students have to pass the exam, so the school gets the money, so the teachers get paid, and perpetuates the whole cycle of not actually learning. So what happens? You're test on some material as you go along, and then at the end of the semester or quarter, whatever structure they have, you are tested again, right? So you're tested twice over the same material. What happens before each of these tests? You're not actually learning, and I know it for a fact, because before each of these tests, what do you do? You have to study. You have to go back over the material. You have to actually learn it again, right? Think of the insanity of this. You've spent how many weeks, how many hours in a classroom being lectured to by a person, learning material, and then when you get tested, you have to relearn the same shit over and over again. It's clearly broken, clearly doesn't work. The model of uh, learning everything in a big chunk and then trying to recall that big chunk of information later is fundamentally broken. It is not learning. It's just regurgitation for a test. So you need to toss that conception of learning out the window. It doesn't actually work. So what's the alternative then? So uh, before we address that, we have to take a brief digression. So at Intel, we, we received something called lean training. So training in the lean methodology, so to speak. So uh, this was pioneered by uh, Toyota Motor Corporation in I think the 1980s, maybe 1970s. I'm not a historian, don't quote me on that. But it was pioneered by Toyota in the 1980s or so to deal with the problems they faced in manufacturing. It's what allowed them to become the world's you know, largest manufacturer of automobiles that are you know, high quality. They're the benchmark for reliability. They did that through lean methodology. So the lean method seeks to reduce waste at all levels of a particular process. In this case, automobile manufacturing, and in Intel's case, semiconductor manufacturing. So the basic idea is uh, what you need to take away is that one of the biggest weights they sought to reduce was the waste of inventory. So you can kind of think of it as stockpiling information for an exam uh, being analogous to stockpiling parts for production, right? You don't want to keep a bunch of parts sitting around if they're not doing anything, just like you don't want to stuff a bunch of information in your brain at one point in time if it's not actually going to be used. So they use something called just-in-time production where they would order stuff as they needed it to come in just at the right time when they needed it to build the car to get it off the assembly line to get the next one moving. So the analogy for this is just-in-time learning. So let's suppose you are a machine learning engineer and you're new to the job. You've figured out some model. You've got it to serve results that seem you know, somewhat meaningful, and you want to deploy this into production. So now you have to do something you've never done before. You have to learn how to take a model from a terminal environment to something that can be served to actual customers to make your business money, right? You, and you can't screw it up because if you screw it up, the business goes under, it's a catastrophe, and you're going to get fired. So uh, you have to know how to do this. So how do you do it? Well, the schooling approach to this would be to go purchase a bunch of courses, read a bunch of books, a bunch of tutorials, work through all of them, and then try to deploy the model into production. Now, what do we know from the argument about schooling? We know this isn't going to work because by the time you finished reading everything, you've forgotten everything you read at the beginning. Even if you take good notes, you still have to spend time going over the notes, right? Because you didn't actually understand it. So the solution to this is not to spend hours or days reading uh, documents, tutorials, videos, not to consume content, but to actually try to produce something. So you can go to the documentation, say in TensorFlow's case, you go to their rather sparse and uh, kind of lackluster documentation and try to figure it out on your own. Now you will invest many, many hours attempting to figure it out on your own, and you may indeed fail. You might even succeed. You might get it to work, in which case you're going to feel great about yourself. But even if you don't, it's not a big deal. You're still ahead of the game. And the reason is that in the process of attempting to figure something out for yourself, 
you've discovered what questions to ask. So if you've ever gone through a tutorial and you see the uh, creator of the tutorial or even my stuff, if you see me do certain steps and you wonder why does he do it that way, it's because there is some underlying problem at some point I had to solve and that is the solution to that problem. And I can't convey all that tribal information in a video just like the tutorial author can't convey all that you know, experiential information in a tutorial. And so you're gonna miss as you read the tutorial without doing it yourself, you're going to miss all of that contextual information that tells you the why. And it is the why that is behind learning. It is not the how. Learning is not how to do something. It is why you do something the way you do it. And by going through and suffering, and it is suffering, you know, reading TensorFlow documentation is definitely the definition of suffering. Uh, by suffering first, you will know what questions to ask, where things fall apart where you have difficulty and you'll be able to ask detailed specific questions of the tutorial say okay I'm looking for this step that step oh it's right here it's right there boom I've got it it's done it works and you actually understood how it works why it works in other words you have actually learned by practicing just in time learning so that is tip number one practice just in time learning don't read a bunch of tutorials, courses. Now they have their place, obviously I produce them, so I must think they have some value, And th but their value is in helping the people that have struggled to solve something first. Okay, so that's tip number one. Tip number two also comes from my graduate experience as well as uh, a little bit of my time at Intel. So uh, in graduate school, when we had to solve a problem, we had to think through the chain of causality. So I remember one time, uh, I, I worked with a professor, uh, my PhD advisor, it was just me and him in the lab. Our postdoc had uh, cycled out and we had no other students, any of the students that survived in fact. Uh, they, all got, they all got fired, I was the only one that made it through, but uh, we were struggling on a process to build uh, spintronic devices. Those are devices that are nanoscale, you know, 100 nanometers in size or less, that use magnetic fields to process information. In this case, we're trying to make spin valves, so you pass a polarized, spin polarized current through and it flips a layer and you measure the change in resistance. So we had a rather involved process that took around 10 to 12 hours using electron beam lithography, uh, sputtering deposition, uh, vapor deposition, a uh, whole bunch of chemical etching, stuff like that. So it was a very tedious uh, process with not much margin for error. So it was October, I forget what year it was, but it was October, and we'd been struggling for weeks on end. Every device we made was totally non-functional. It was all high resistance, meaning that it was totally blown out, right? You have a very tiny, tiny structure. Even the smallest amount of current is going to destroy it. So we struggled with this problem for weeks. We uh, did what we you know, would normally do for problem solving. We say, okay, the resistance is high. What are the possibilities? What could cause that to happen? And you make a list. And you go through the list one by one and you conduct experiments to actually uh, rule those out one by one, scientifically, systematically, and keeping good notes, of course. You don't want to do these things without keeping notes. Uh, keeping good notes, keeping track of what you've done, what works, what doesn't. Well, at the very end, nothing worked. We were exasperated. It was 2 o'clock in the morning on like a Friday night. We had been working for weeks on end continuously trying to figure it out. Uh, it was our livelihoods were at stake. This was the the whole point of our research and you know if it didn't work we were sunk we were basically screwed uh, in our desperation I kinda thought hey now uh, you know when did all of this problem start you know what when did these problems start and we thought back to it well it started just a few weeks ago well you know what what changed a few weeks ago nothing nothing about the process we hadn't changed anything so something environmental must have changed you know what 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 could it possibly be oh oh it's it's you know it's autumn time, it gets kind of dry. What happens when things get dry? You get static electricity. So what it, we discovered happened was that the devices were actually fine up until the last step when we were trying to transfer them from the little plastic container we had them in, which is not good for uh, anti-static, putting them onto the microscope to solder on wires, you know, like a, like a tiny gold wire onto a 10 millimeter or a 10, uh, 50 micron patch of, of gold uh, to actually conduct the current, uh, IV measurements and we discovered we were zapping it because we weren't properly grounded we were just walking around picking up static and then zap killing it the last second 12 hours of work totally freaking wasted and not worse than that many weeks of experimentation trying to figure things out wasted so uh, 
we discovered that. And then from then on, we put the little samples in little boats, just a, a literally aluminum foil boats. You fold up into a little box shape and that serves as a good little Faraday cage to protect the samples from static discharge. And boom, we were back in business. Now there's actually two lessons in here. So the first lesson or the second tip I have for you is what is called at Intel model based problem solving in physics. We just called it how you solve problems. It's just problem solving, but Intel had to have fancy names for everything. So it was model based problem solving for them. And the idea is you formulate a causal chain of events. You know, this happens and this happens and this happens and this happens. Okay. Uh, and so you conduct experiments in a controlled, directed way to eliminate possibilities to figure out why something is broken. Now, how does this apply to learning? Well, have you ever learned something and figured out you, and you get to a point where it just doesn't work? You know, you've screwed something up at some point, right? Something doesn't work. This happens a lot when you're training models. You may see in reinforcement learning, it doesn't seem to learn and you have to figure out, okay, am I making some kind of stupid mistake or am I just not giving it enough time to train? Uh, those are both models for why the agent doesn't seem to train and you can test those by either letting it run longer or moving to, let's say, a simpler environment that trains much, much faster or one for which you know based on other algorithms that it should train relatively quickly. So model-based problem solving to formulate uh, cause and effect chains that tell you where something breaks down. This is important because it tells you why things work and how they work. If you can't diagnose a problem with something, you don't really understand how it works. If you're not mechanically inclined, if you don't know anything about cars, right? I could, if I didn't know you, I could test you by saying, here, go change the oil on your car. A very basic task. Uh, if you've ever done it, it's really not that difficult. You get into the car, unscrew the, the pan, and just let it drain out. But if you don't know anything about cars, then that is a totally intractable problem to solve, right? Uh, if you had to diagnose a starter issue in a car and you knew nothing about cars, then that would be a totally intractable problem. So uh, learning and problem solving are intimately related. They are really one and the same thing in my mind. Problem solving is learning, and the way you solve problems is through model-based problem solving or just systematic cause and effect reasoning. Now, the second or my third tip in there, the second lesson, third tip is the final thing is to always question your assumptions when all else fails. So at the end of all this experimentation, we discovered that uh, nothing we had done worked. And so I went back to the drawing board in my mind and said, you know, we have assumed something to be true that is not. And our fundamental assumption was that our process was killing the samples, when in reality it was the environment. So by going back and questioning that fundamental assumption, I discovered the flaw in our reasoning and we were able to actually figure out what went wrong and then move forward with our research. One of my great triumphs as a graduate student, I'm very proud of that, but uh, it, it served as a lesson for me uh, throughout my career, even to this day. Whenever something isn't working and you don't know why, oftentimes it's because you have assumed something to be true that is not. And that is true with uh, whenever you're learning something. So you get to a point in a problem, you're trying to solve it, and you can't quite seem to solve it. So it means in general that you missed some chain of reasoning or some nugget of information you were supposed to learn along the line. Because we're all smart people, relatively speaking, you know, not, may not be Einstein's, but we're definitely smarter than the average bear if we're trying to do machine learning and artificial intelligence. And so if you can't follow through a chain of reasoning well enough to finish a problem, it means you missed some step in that chain of reasoning. And so you have to, and what did you replace it with? You replace it with an assumption. You assume something to be true to fill in that gap of your knowledge. And so, you know, you probably assumed the wrong thing and didn't know what you didn't know. So you need to go back and figure out what that is and get it fixed. So that is three tips that I have for learning things more effectively. You may have expected something different. I'm not going to, you know, I didn't want to talk about uh, how to read faster or, you know, what books to read, what courses. That's all. Uh, there are better sources of information out there relative to some others, but the fundamental um, principle behind learning is problem solving in a systematic and, f and formulaic logical way. Uh, it is not about acquiring information and then regurgitating information later. It is about just in time problem solving, solving problems as you go using cause and effect reasoning and making sure to question assumptions when something goes wrong as it inevitably will. I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, this, uh, this has helped me solve uh, pretty much every problem in my life. Well, at least since I learned about it anyway, I didn't know about it as a child, so whatever, but I hope this is helpful for you. If it is, make sure to share this video, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. So you get notified. I know only like 10% of you get the notifications. So make sure to hit the bell icon. So you get notified when I release new videos and I hope to see you in the next video.